Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. The season is almost here and that means you're going to want to buy tickets and go see your favorite team. Friends of the program SeatGeek is the app for you. Download it and you can get pictures from the vantage point of the seat. They grade the prices so you know you're getting the best deal. And if you use my code in the settings, you get 20 bucks off your first purchase. You know you're going to a game, so help me help you help me by using SeatGeek the next time you want to see a game or a concert event. You in? I think it's clear that Steph Curry has firmly established himself as the best shooter the NBA has ever seen. He shattered records year over year and has changed the way the game is played, pushing players farther and farther out to maximize the extra point you get from the three-point shot. Today, let's look at his mechanics to get a better understanding of how he's been able to effortlessly knock down shots from such long distances. Let's start with the feet. You can see how he utilizes the turn both feet parallel and pointing to about 10 o'clock to allow his shooting hip and elbow to properly align with the rim in one vertical plane. You'll also notice he doesn't jump very high. While this is a practice situation, in games, he doesn't get much higher than this at all, almost the equivalent of jumping rope. Without a huge jump, it allows him to replicate the height without fear of fatigue at the end of games. Notice the slight rotation in the air. This is a natural movement that comes out of the right shoulder moving forward on the release in the air. It is almost impossible to stop this, and if you try, would create quite a bit of unneeded tension in your core, prohibiting you from releasing a smooth and relaxed shot. From the right corner, Steph's knees are parallel, most likely because the pass almost always comes from the left. However, when he shoots from out top and the left side, I've noticed his right knee tends to cross over his midline a bit more, and this could be caused by his adjustment from catching the ball from his right side. Steph's feet do flow forward a little bit, hinging at the waist in what we call a sway, but it isn't that pronounced unless he's several feet behind the line and needs more power. Let's look at how he catches the ball. Notice how he doesn't extend his arms out from his body very far. This eliminates any need to bring the ball back into his body before going up. When the ball comes from his left, he uses the turn to allow the ball to hit his hands right in the alignment and go up in a smooth motion. The shooting hand is behind the ball as it catches it, no need to adjust before shooting. When the pass comes from the right, the shooting hand cocks the wrist back while the left hand absorbs the energy of the ball. Before catching it, he's already made his shooting pocket. Once he catches it, Curry uses a short dip to get rhythm and power into his shot. It's not very large, about one basketball size below where he caught it. This is one of the keys to his distance shooting. Without it, he'd have to generate more power with his arms and risk losing accuracy. Steph is also a midline shooter, meaning he brings the ball to the center of his body and uses that as his alignment. You'll notice that his elbow is to the outside of the ball slightly and that there is very little, if any, space between his palm and the ball. Also be aware of where his set point is. Traditionally, coaches have stressed bringing the ball to the eyebrow ridge to enable vision of the rim, but it's clear that Steph is covering his right eye at the set point before it immediately goes up and out. Notice how the elbow crease is level with his forehead, so the lower set point does not mean the shot trajectory will be too low. In fact, it's this set point that stresses the one motion shot. The ball stays in front of his face the entire time and never pauses once on its way up from the dip. This is the crucial piece to the puzzle that enables him to shoot so well from 40 feet and farther. By using a one motion shot, he maximizes all the power he is generating from his legs and his dip into a fluid release that is always straight. Another key to the one motion shot is the timing of the upward movement of the ball. Notice how he's already started to bend in his legs before the ball begins to move up. He's basically in his loaded stance, ready to begin straightening his legs as the ball starts to rise up towards the set point. Because this shot is so quick and depends on full extension of the arm and wrist, you won't see him pull up from the mid-range very often into a jump shot. 
he'll usually turn it into a floater from as far as 17 feet away since he can control the power much easier this way. Notice how floppy the wrist is on his snap. Both the elbow locks and the wrist snap at the same time. A crucial piece of timing that, once mastered, ensures consistency of release. Also notice his left hand. There is definitely some amount of influence with his left thumb as the ball is being released. And this isn't anything abnormal. A great many of our best shooters in the past have all been thumbers. It's not something that needs to be taught, but also not necessarily something that coaches need to fix either. Notice how Curry follows the ball with his eyes after the release. It is clear he is laser focused on the rim throughout the whole shot, but once he snaps his wrist, his head does lift up and his eyes snap to follow the ball. There are a lot of potential reasons for why he does this, and I asked Warriors coach Bruce Frazier about his theory in a previous video. While one can argue that it doesn't matter what you do once you release the ball, the list of great shooters who follow the ball with their eyes is very long and very distinguished. And I feel it's something that we can't really ignore. My theory is that it brings the focus back on your mechanics. Instead of throwing your focus on a target that is 25 feet away, knowing you're going to follow the ball can make you a little bit more aware of the hip and elbow alignment and wrist snap and release the things that are going on in your immediate vicinity. Off the dribble, one of the keys to his shooting is the left-handed dribble. By bringing the ball to his shooting hand, it enables a faster release. Again, because he's a midline shooter, the ball doesn't have to go all the way to his right side before starting the jump shot. This efficiency of motion with his left-hand dribble makes him more effective than trying to pull up with the right hand and more reason for other players to work on their left-handed dribble. Not so much to be able to blow by people to your offhand, but to maximize your efficiency with your off-the-dribble pull-ups from distance. So there you have it, sports fans. That was a deep dive into the details of Steph Curry's mechanics and what makes him the greatest shooter we've ever seen in the NBA. While he's doing things we've never seen before, I have no doubt all the 10-year-olds studying his game now will yield several more Steph Currys when they get old enough to compete professionally, and the game will continue to change into something we might not recognize in a generation.